Do you ever have a flight that you've been waiting so long for and that you never wanted to end? I've just landed into Heathrow on my first ever flight on the British Airways Jumbo and what would turn out to be my last ever flight on the British Airways Boeing 747-400. I already regret not flying the 747 more and I certainly didn't make the most of this flight when I had the chance. Let's go back to the start to a weary and jet lagged me at JFK's Terminal 7. Hi and welcome to Terminal 7 at JFK, this is the British Airways Terminal. It's quite dark outside. The time is 5 to 11. Um, tonight we're going to fly back to London, this time on the Queen of the Skies, the 747. I'm really excited about this flight, despite the jet lag and the horrendous time of what it is. Um, I've never been on a jump before, so I'm really excited. I'm going to be sitting in the economy, more or less right at the back. Um, so hopefully I'll still get to have the full 747 experience. The flight's delayed by about an hour, so it's going to be midnight New York time before we uh, actually push back, which is a little frustrating. So the inbound aircraft was delayed by about an hour. It was about an hour late, leaving the Heathrow um, earlier today. Should have left about six hours and left about seven. Um, but not too worry. That's enough of jet lag me for now. I stayed in the East Village in New York, so took the Metro and Air Train over to JFK today. It's a really easy system to use, just make sure you have the correct fare, around $7 on your Metro card before you start. The air train is an automated shuttle, so make sure you sit right at the front for a great view of the airfield and to pretend that you're driving the train. Terminal 7 is towards the end of the line, and once you alight, the main terminal building is just over to your left on a short walk away. When you enter the terminal, there's a selection of check-in desks, both manned and automated. There's not too many flights left tonight from this terminal. Anyway, security was an absolute breeze, no queue and really friendly TSA staff. The terminal has a few shops selling tourist merchandise and duty free. There appears to be plenty of seating around the perimeter of the terminal, although for me there'll be no access to the famous Concorde room tonight. A few, but not all of the seats do have power ports, which is handy before a flight. Looking back now, it's hard to imagine Terminal 7 without a 747 on the ramp. Here's my aircraft on its slightly delayed approach into JFK tonight. And here's the Queen of the Skies arriving from Heathrow, tonight's aircraft, Victor Foxtrot. Now, before boarding started, I, along with a few other passengers, were called to an alternative gate for an unknown reason. My passport was checked and I was issued with a paper boarding pass rather than the digital one on my phone. T7 itself is actually quite a small terminal, it's a lot smaller than I thought it was going to be. Um, for a big airline like BA with such a heavy presence at um, London to New York route, I thought this terminal would be a lot more than what it is. There are a couple of duty free shops, quite a few places to eat actually, which I was quite impressed with. Not that I've actually had any of that, I'm going to wait to see what we get on the plane. What I didn't realise before I came here was that other airlines use this terminal, not just BA. So there's a few from different airlines flying over the pond tonight. 20 minutes before boarding, our cabin crew joined the aircraft. Their attention ladies and gentlemen, British Airways flight 182, now boarding priority passengers in groups of 1, 2 and 3. Thank you. Boarding was initially by group number with 1, 2 and 3 boarding first, before everyone got fed up with waiting and made a mad rush to the front. It was fairly chaotic with no key management. I too got fed up and powered into the boarding queue before Group 5 was announced. Thanks. Hello. Only one of the aircraft doors was available to board through tonight, so the process was super slow. Eventually though, I made it to the aircraft door and I stepped on the 747 for my very first time. It's surreal passing the stairs for the upper deck and seeing in person just how long this business class cabin is. It seems to go on forever. 
Next up is the World Traveller Plus cabin or Premium Economy. Don't forget to check out the 777 video that I took from Madrid to Heathrow where I reviewed the Premium Economy seat on BA's 777s. Eventually I made it to the World Traveller or Economy cabin in the rear portion of the aircraft. I stowed my bag in what has to be said was a fairly small luggage bin for such a big aircraft. I made my way to the window seats where I'd be sitting for the next six or so hours. Pure adrenaline keeping me awake now, it's 5am in the UK and I haven't slept in at least 24 hours. The view of that wing though, keeping me awake. Before I'm joined by seatmates, let's have a quick look at the seat. The cabin is in a 343 layout and the seats are a little narrow. On them you'll find your pillow, blanket and your earbuds for the in-flight entertainment. We pushed back at just before midnight New York time and had a long taxi out to runway 31 left. left over Hamilton Beach and around Jamaica Bay. Today's route takes us along the eastern seaboard and over the north of Halifax. Tracking east over the Atlantic will be well south of Greenland and Iceland I aim to make landfall in Europe over the Republic of Ireland around Shannon. From there it's into England up the Bristol Channel before landing into Heathrow. Shortly after takeoff, the drink service started along with the pretzels. Why do airlines love these so much? I'm not complaining though because I do too. Dinner turned up shortly after with tonight's meal consisting of a rather plentiful side salad, the usual crackers in the bread roll with various spreads a really nice piece of chocolate cake and a chicken casserole for the main. The meal was decent and I finished it all off and the chocolate cake was much better than the small mousse that I had on the outbound flight. We're approaching St John's now so before I head off for some sleep let's check out the IFE. The Panasonic system is leaps and bounds ahead of the system installed on the 777s. The screen is much better, is more intuitive to use and the touch screen is more responsive. There's still plenty of content to watch and more than enough to keep everyone entertained. As the saying goes, blink and you'll miss it. I woke up as we were crossing over Ireland. Little time left on the flight now, so let's check out the seat. One of the most important things on a night flight is the headrest, which on this aircraft features fold down ears. I wasn't really a huge fan of these and I do prefer the newer netted headrest that you get on the later aircraft. You do get 31 inches of seat pitch and the seat width is 17.5 inches. Now that's one of the smallest seat widths in the British Airways long haul fleet and is noticeably narrower than the 777s. Up top you'll find the reading lights which are controllable via your in-flight entertainment and there's the no smoking and seatbelt signs located within the ceiling of the centre aisle. Reserving a seat in World Traveller on the JFK route can be expensive, £51 for a forward seat 
down to £26 at the rear. I went for the £31 option in row 49. Unfortunately, I did sleep through the second meal service, but before we land, let's check out the Wi-Fi on this 747. There are three pricing options ranging from 4 99 up to 17 99 The speeds aren't great though, and I could burn through this data easily if it was fast enough. I flew back to London on the Monday evening, but my girlfriend had work to finish up in New York, so couldn't leave until the following Tuesday evening. To my envy and much jealousy, she got upgraded on the way back to business class on her 747 flight. She's watched me do a few videos now, so she did try to do her own sort of trip report review. I've left them in and I'll leave them in at the end of the video, so don't forget to look out for those once we've landed. Well into the descent now, and we're approaching the London area. We completed two loops of the holding track over the south of England and to the south of Heathrow, before lining up to land on runway 27 right. As we touch down and taxi in, I'm in a reflective mood. This is my first and last flight on a British Airways 747. I feel very lucky to have flown on the Queen of the Skies, but I'm not alone. Tens, maybe hundreds of millions of people have flown in the fleet. This aircraft has connected families, friends, businesses all over the world for well over 20 years. It's hard not to be nostalgic. Do I have regrets about this flight? Absolutely. I wish I'd have made more of the flight when I was on it. I wish I'd have paid the extra £20 to sit closer to the wing so I could appreciate the sweep more. I wish I hadn't slept for most of the flight, and I wish I'd gone to the toilet so I could have seen what it was like. The thing is, no matter how many regrets I have about this flight, I still did it and I'm still really happy that I got to fly on the Queen of the Skies. This flight was part of a return with BA that cost me just around £364, booking about three weeks in advance, and it was worth every single penny. And that's that. That takes us to the end of this journey, back to where we started, walking up the aisle of this immense 71 metre quad jet. Before we draw this video to a close, please indulge me in listening to my girlfriend's trip report of what it's like to fly in business class on the jumbo with British Airways. When I boarded, my economy seat had a broken tray table, so the crew asked me to wait until everyone else had boarded. Once they had, I was offered an aisle business seat which I didn't hesitate to take. The first thing I spotted was a white company amenity kit which came in this pleather pouch. You get a handy eye mask and socks, a toothbrush and spa potions, finally a pen. There's an instruction card about how to use the seat, there was all kinds of fancy buttons that I didn't really understand. I checked out the movies on the big screen and the fairly comfortable headphones before sleeping for most of the flight. I was woken up by the crew just before landing. Missing the whole meal service, but being grateful for a full five hours of sleep. They did bring me breakfast though, and it was really good. Now I'm sure you can imagine just how jealous I was when I found out that she got the upgrade to business, and just how annoyed I was that she slept through the entire experience. But I guess what this goes to show is the Jumbo has got a special place in a lot of people's hearts. Lots of people have got stories about it that are special to them, that only happen on their flight. With that, I'll leave you as we walk off the aircraft for the final time. Thanks very much for watching. Please do subscribe and give the video a like and let me know what you thought in the comments. Thank you and we'll see you next time.